So today we'll continue our discussion with the content blocks only, and we'll explore a few more content blocks. So let's move to this folder, and then here we'll be creating all the blocks. So we'll click on the create button, and then we'll go to button content block. So here we are going to create one button. So let's say if you want to add one button, uh, it could be buy now, or it could be, you know, learn more, uh, whatever it could be. So let's say it is buy now button. Okay. So we don't need to write the HTML for it. We can just use this uh, content block and create a button. Uh, here we can style this. I mean, we can change the text. We can uh, change the font size, font styling, color, um and the styling for the button itself like we can have the blue background color or whatever it is um and then the padding border or we can add the link so if somebody clicks on this particular button uh they will be directed to www.google.com okay so we can um put any url Yeah, and because for the HTML will all, all automatically be generated uh, for the button. So whatever changes that we'll make over here, uh, they will appear over here as well. Okay. Now next one is the block settings. So the block settings will apply on the entire block. So we can have the background color on the entire block. Let's go this one. Okay, so this will look something like this. So I'll remove the background for now. Yeah, so this is how we can create the button control block. So let me just save the changes. Um, button. Next, we have HTML content block. So here uh, we we can see that it has only two tabs, right? One is the center and then another one is the block settings. So here we do not have uh, uh, the HTML tab, right? Because we are writing the HTML itself. So the content tab is nothing but the HTML tab. So when we're writing the HTML, it will not generate the corresponding HTML. So it doesn't make any sense. So that is why we have only two tabs. So we can write the HTML code here, or if we have the HTML file saved in our account, we can browse the file and we can upload the file here as well. So let's say file.html, I'll click on save button. So whatever the HTML code that we have written, uh, it will basically populate over here. Okay, so if somebody simulate the HTML or if we already have the HTML you know, available with us, we can either write it or we can just browse and uh, fetch the HTML code here in the content block. And then the similar to each and every current block, we have the block settings, we can have the background color, border, margin, padding, and so on and so forth. So let me see the changes now. Uh, next one, let's talk about the image browser. I think we talked about the image now and then. So image browser is the external version of the image command block. Here we can have multiple images in a single frame. In the same frame, we can have multiple images. So you must have seen um, whenever we go to any website and we have these uh, scrolling images, we have these moving images, right? So that happens with the image browser. 
so we can insert multiple images. Let me do that. So let's say our first images. Let's say a full hiking preview. I'll select this one. And all the settings will remain same. We can have the alternative fixed. So I can select full hiking. Let's say full hiking only. Okay, we can add the link and uh, whatever the link that we will add over here, uh, a user will be directly to if they click on this. Mm. Okay. So let me add one more image. So now we have two different images in a single content block and uh, they will be scrolled like we have two options either we can have these uh, scrolled automatically and in that case what will happen every six seconds uh, they will be like uh, the image will change or uh, if you want to manually scroll we can do that so when we click on these navigation icons uh, we can move on to the next image so we will keep it automatic for now and uh, we can also change the height and width of the images um, and then the same styling options that we have border width image padding alignment and these things and then next we have the block settings okay so in the block settings we have the border space margin background and these things so the difference between the image and the image browser is that there we can only have a single image but here we can have the multiple images in the same film so if you want to show uh you must have seen whenever we browse uh, when we, whenever we go to any product page um in any e-commerce website so we have a um, couple of images in the single frame so uh if you are talking about a smartphone so it has a front front image you know back image side images and all these images right so we generally you know encounter uh, image browser in our day-to-day -day life <clears throat> So let me see the changes now. Let's image. Uh, next, let's talk about the code snippet. Okay, um, so here we have only just one uh, block, I mean, one tab that is content. We do not have the uh, like block settings, or we cannot style the block, um, and also we don't have the HTML. So, what we do, we write the HTML over here, and generally, basically, uh, the code snippet block was um, created. Uh, to write the code over here. Now we have other programming languages like HTML, CSS, and these things. Uh, so what we can do, uh, sorry, uh, we have AMP script, SSJs in these languages. So we can write these languages over here. Now what is the benefit of choosing code snippet over HTML content block is that uh, it doesn't take the extra space. Uh, since we do not have any styling option over here, uh, generally it is used to run the code in the backend uh, so if you want to display something on the ui on the email message then we will go ahead with the html content block otherwise we will go ahead with the code snippet if we have a requirement where we don't want to show anything on the ui on the email message but we want this code to be executed in the backend so whenever the email message is loaded we want some code to be executed in the backend maybe it could be capturing some information and storing that in a data extension. Uh, we will learn about the AMP script and SSGS. So there could be any code operation that we want to perform in the backend. So whenever we want to run something in the backend, but we don't want to uh, take the space on the UI, or we don't want to take the space on the email message, then we'll go ahead with the code snippet. 
So when we will learn about the AMP script, then I'll cover this thing. Uh, I'll show you how we can write the code over here. <coughs> Let's talk about the A-B test now. Uh, so when we were discussing about the A-B test, uh, email sent, then, you know, search field, we have uh, six different types of the test types, right? One was the email sub, uh, subject line, click headers, prompting, and there was one test type that was uh, content type, right? Or content area, sorry. So, let me go to AB test. In content area uh, test type, what happens is that we have to choose one email, but uh, we should have two different content blocks. And uh, at the end of the day, what will happen? The marketing cloud will send two different versions to two uh, separate audiences. Now, to the version A will contain the content block. I mean, the content block A, and the another version will contain the content plan B. So let me show you how it is done. So let's say we have one email message and in that email message, we are confused with two different content blocks. I should have worked with this content block or the another content block. It could be, you know, uh, two different uh, text blocks. So in the first text content block, we have a different content or maybe in another uh, text block, we have different content. I mean, we are just talking about the description of the product and in another text block, we are talking about the features. Okay. And uh, in another, we are just talking about giving the description. Okay. You know, this product is that and something like this. So we are not sure that, okay, which content block we should go ahead with. So what we'll do, we'll choose the content area over here and we'll click on the choose email, but we don't have an email. We are... Okay, so it says no data found. Why? Uh, because we don't have an email in which this AB test content block is configured. Okay, so let me show you real quick. Um, so we have this email, right? Uh, HTML email, but uh, okay, let me do one thing. So I'll show you all these email, like how do we create the email message in a while. Uh, for now, I just wanted to show you that how this thing works. So let me choose one email message. Uh, so let's say we will be writing some text over. So let's say we have this email message and uh, what we want to do that we want to test that, um, you know, which content block should, should we go ahead with. So since this email message does not contain the content block of AB type, right? Uh, let me just save this. So we have this content block. So we have this AB test content block. So now we do not have this AB test content block in this particular email. So we cannot choose this email here in AB test, right? So what we need to do is uh, that, uh, let me edit this. So first of all, we have to configure. Yeah. 
So I'll drag and drop one AB test content block. So either we can, you know, create it from here or we can create it from there as well. So I'll click on browse button and I need to select two different content blocks. So the content A would be, let's say this text content block or so just for the sake of the demo, uh, what I'm doing is that I'm selecting any other content block, let's say HTML content block. Now we have two content in the single email message, the content A and content B, right? But both the content will not be um, shared with the, or will be like both the content will not be included in the single email message. So what will happen? Let me save the changes over here. Uh, let me go over here. Now we have this email message, AB test content demo. Let me select this. And now what it is saying is that it has created two different versions of the same email message. The version A contains the content area A and the version B contains the content area B. Now we'll move, when we'll move on to the next step that is recipients and we will choose the test audience. So let's say we have 100 subscribers. So, and we select that, okay, uh, 50 subscribers should receive the email with content a and 50 subscribers should receive the email with content area b and based on uh, the engagement ratio like which email uh, gives us the more open rate and the click rate uh, we will go ahead with that particular content area so this is how we can use this a b test content block so if you want to use that uh, if you want to uh, test two different content areas using the a b testing method uh, then we can choose the we can create the content block from here and then we can include that in the email message.